The war has begun. It's 2 versus 10. Hey everyone, Templar74 here with another Yu-Gi-Oh! video, and today's Yu-Gi-Oh! video is going to be my thoughts and impressions regarding the latest episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains, episode 105, Intercept. And I gotta be honest with you guys, although this episode did not have a duel in it, this episode fits the definition of plot armor. If there ever was an episode to meet that definition, this would be it. And it also gave us a great look into how Season 3 is going to be going and what direction it's going to take. And I gotta be honest with you, so far, I'm really enjoying it. In my opinion, it was a great episode, but uh, we'll talk about all that soon enough. So at risk of further rambling, let's move on to the actual episode. So the episode begins with Zizen, and he's actually in this starry background-like room. At first, I thought he was going to be meeting with the chess pieces after Queen's demise, but no, it's actually he's meeting with the kings, the top shareholders of Soltec. And yeah, he's meeting with them. They are basically discussing their concerns about what happened to Queen, and basically they tell Zizen, you have to fix this, and you have to fix it immediately. But Zizen is really quiet during the meeting. He just says, all right, and then we actually see him with Honami, and she's actually basically asking, she's like, so who were you meeting with? And he says, the kings, and she's confused by this because she's like, well, I thought the queen was at the top of the company, and that's when Zizen explains that the kings are Sol's top shareholders, and she says, well, what did they say? And Zizen pretty much just says whatever he wants, and he has a really scared look on his face, and we soon learn why, because we see Zizen actually message all of the duelists, all of the top duelists he could find, all of the playmaker's team, and and uh, yeah, he basically sends him a message asking them to meet him at Link Brain Central Station, including Playmaker and Soulburner. And of course, they're kind of, they're kind of, Soulburner's kind of iffy on this, but Playmaker's like, no, we're going to go ahead and go. And Kusengi's basically says, you know what, you're right, it's not a trap because Playmaker got removed off of Soul's top wanted list. So now Playmaker's no longer an outlaw after that incident with Bowman. So yeah. They make the decision that they're going to go to Link Vrains to meet Zizen. And not only that, Kusengi is going to go with them. So this is something different because we've never seen Kusengi actually go into Link Vrains very often before. We've seen it a couple times, but it's very rare that it happens. And this is the first time since, of course, Lightning you know, kidnapped Jin and forced uh, Kusengi to duel. This is the first time he's gone to Vrain since then. So yeah, the three of them end up going to the central courtyard there and they actually run into Zizen and Blue Maiden. Then we have Blood Shepherd, Go Nizuka, and Ghost Girl. And yeah, the, the meeting kind of surprised his playmaker, especially Go, when he basically asks if Go is okay. And Go, you know, now he's actually looking like Go again. And he basically says, you never change. I want to say thank you and playmakers like what do you mean why are you thinking me and uh, and this is a really weird interaction i hope they i hope they build out on this later on i gotta say because this is also a weird interaction for me i mean i get it but i don't get it you know so yeah we see an interaction between them and finally after everybody's gathered zizen shows them or tells them rather what happened to queen and basically tells them I want you to protect me. And they're confused by this. So they ask Zizen if he suspects he knows who did this. And Zizen basically says, I know more than suspect. I actually know who did it because they left a message. And that's when Zizen reveals I's message and I's threat. And basically, I's threat is... And he starts it out very comically. He basically tells Zizen, you're number one at Soltech now. You're welcome, by the way. But, oh, by the way, I'm going to come in three days, and I'm going to end you and steal your code key. So you only have three days to live, so enjoy your temporary promotion. And that's when I introduces himself as I, and, of course, Robopi introduces himself as Robopi. And this stuns everybody, but none more than Playmaker. And while Playmaker is standing there stunned, we see Blood Shepherd actually accuse Playmaker of knowing that I did this and knowing that I was hiding and basically says, calls Playmaker out and says, you are responsible for this because you were I's partner, you were I's ally and friend, and now this is what we get. And everybody is kind of walking back Blood Shepherd because they're like, no, because Playmaker's a hero. If he knew that I was going to do this, if I was going to hurt somebody, Playmaker would have already stopped him. He would have already went after I if he knew where he was and knew what he was doing. So everybody kind of calms down on accusing Playmaker of helping I in this scheme here, but 
But that doesn't that doesn't end the conversation because Zizen goes on to repeat his request for everybody here to protect him because now he's only got three days to live and this is the threat that he's facing here. And Soulburner is basically like, well, what's the big deal about a code key? You know, he's like, explain this to me. And we learned that Soltech has control of 30% of the network. And basically what I did was steal half the code key to gain access to Soltech's master computer. And if he gets that, he'll be able to control 30% of the structure, including all the Soltis robots that have been sold so far. So essentially I could imprison humans with Soltis. And that's a big problem. So yeah, that's the threat I potentially poses here if this plan goes down. And we actually see two people of this group kind of hesitant on whether they're going to accept Zizen's plea for help. And that's actually Playmaker and Soulburner. In fact, Playmaker just sums it up with one phrase, give me some time. And that's when everybody goes their separate ways. And we actually see Zizen go somewhere else. Because while everybody goes back to the real world, Zizen goes to a very familiar place. He goes to Revolver's base. He goes to the Knights of Hanoi base that we saw way back in season one where Kogami was hiding. And basically Revolver's like, I can't believe you showed up by yourself. And we learn that Zizen went to Revolver for help. He asked Revolver and the Knights of Hanoi to help protect him. Him to help go after I when he learned it was him and basically revolvers like yes because now the Knights of Hanoi's only desire is to kill the Ignis and to kill I so yes they're going to accept Zizen's offer for help and revolver actually shows Zizen his newest creation and that is an anti-Ignis AI known as Pandora and Pandora is a very interesting choice for a name because as we all know, way back when, we heard Zizen tell Playmaker about Ignis and the mythological world being the forbidden fire that was given to humans for knowledge, and Pandora was created out of the anger of God to come down and basically snap down this Ignis fire. It was basically to prevent the Ignis from spreading. So the fact that Revolver created an anti-Ignis AI to go after this, after the myth, you know, it it's just very interesting, and I think Revolver did that intentionally because he knows the Ignis myth, too, because we heard Kogami tell him it way back in Season 1. So, yeah, we now get introduced to Pandora, Revolver's latest creation, and there's not just one. There's four of them. They're uploaded with all dueling knowledge, and basically they're all interlinked, so they can all help Zizen and any other duelist that has it against the Ignis by predicting what... I will do and basically getting to know I they can predict his moves and ultimately help win duels. So Revolver gives Zizen Pandora and I thought at first that was going to be the only help Revolver would give but that's not really true. We see more of that later but we'll get to that. So anyway... With that, meeting with Revolver over, Zizen goes back to the real world like everybody to the real world he does. In fact, he actually is out in broad daylight and he runs into Aoi. And Aoi is really concerned about her brother because she just learned that Zizen only has three days to live. And she's like, are you really sure it's a good idea to be standing out in broad daylight like this? And so, he, you know, he kind of reassures his sister that he's sorry that she caught him and all this other stuff. And so Aoi decides to take him to eat you know, get his mind off of it. And they actually choose Kusungi's food truck and Zizen sees Kusungi there and he recognizes him from the battle with Playmaker. And then he sees Yusuku standing there. And it's at this moment, Zizen puts two and two together and we actually see a transition scene and we see Yusuku in front of Aoi and Zizen. And that's when we see that Zizen now realizes Yusuku is Playmaker, and he actually thanks Yusuku for it, or for helping Aoi, and basically Yusuku's like, I was fighting for myself, I don't deserve thanks. And so, yeah, we see a meeting here for the first time, and Zizen is really happy that although it's his final days, he's really happy that he got to meet Playmaker before ultimately he meets his demise at the hands of Ai. So that's what Zizen is thinking. He's thinking that he's going to be uh, attacked by Ai and eliminated. He thinks he's going to die at Ai's hands, and he still firmly believes that, even with all of this help that he's getting. So yeah, we see this. Zizen gets a phone call, and he leaves, leaving Aoi and Yusuku alone here. And Aoi just learned that Yusuku is Playmaker. 
And it's funny because we see the first real Aoi Yuzuku interaction of the entire series. Like, I get it that we've had little things every once in a while, but this is their first interaction with each other alone since Aoi learned the truth that Yuzuku is playmaker. And we see a real awkward moment between the two of them, and we even see Aoi kind of shift a little bit towards Yuzuku. Shipping moment alert, everybody, for those that ship Aoi and Yusuku. Uh Yeah, basically we see this moment... Aoi thanks Yuzuku for everything and basically has a request of him basically saying don't get involved in this fight. Let us handle the fight with Ai because Aoi doesn't want Yusuku or Playmaker's heart to get broken facing Ai because she knows that it would be unbearable if she had to go up against Aqua or etc etc. She doesn't want Playmaker's heart to be broken so basically she tells him stay out of this fight and let us handle it because we don't want you to go through this pain of fighting your partner. And of course Yusuku doesn't give a response to that. And then we go back where the final battle is going to go down. It's this big um, crystal shaped structure here. Kind of looks a little, little bit like mirror link frames. And it's in here that this battle is going to take place. Everybody's gathered except Playmaker. And everybody's like, okay, everybody's here. What's the plan? And Zizen drops the bombshell. He says, no, not everybody's here. And it's at this point, Revolver, Spectre, and the Knights of Hanoi arrive. And basically... Soul Burner and Blue Maiden are they're torn on this because yes they worked with Revolver and the Knights of Hanoi to go up against Bowman but now they're kind of unsettled seeing them here and that's when Zeisen says I asked the Knights of Hanoi to be here I asked them to help us in this fight and basically they're like well wait a minute well Ghost Girl rather is like well wait a minute isn't their job to go against Soul Technologies isn't their job to get revenge, and that's when Lightning says, no, ever since Lightning's scheme was revealed and we learned that Lightning is the one that deleted Dr. Kogami and put him in that situation there, we no longer have a desire for revenge against Soul Tech. Now our only goal is to kill the Ignis, and Blood Shepherd is the one to say, well, if your job is to kill the Ignis, all of our goals are aligned, and basically it forms the alliance here once again because we saw this alliance before and now we're getting it again with more players this is going to be the team that goes up against I and Robopi. Turn of Zizen's plan here. And his plan is actually very straightforward. We have two gateways that lead into the central core here. Zizen will stay in the central core with Blue Maiden. And then at the two entrances on the inside of the core, one post will be posted by Spectre, Ghost Girl, and Blood Shepherd. The other post will be Go Nizuka and the Three Knights of Hanoi. And then on the outside of this area here, at the two main gates at the outside, will be positioned Revolver on one end, Soul Burner on the other. And yeah, this is going to be the formation of defense because basically if they want to get to Zizen, they're either going to have to get through Revolver and uh, Soul Burner, then they're going to have to get through either the Knights of Hanoi and Go Nizuka, or Spectre, Blood Shepherd, and Ghost Girl, and then ultimately Blue Maiden before they can get to Zizen. So, a really strong strategy here. The only missing component is Playmaker, and we then transition to Ai and Robopi, and Robopi actually notices this and says something to Ai, and Ai's like, no. And it's at this moment Playmaker finally arrives, he makes his big grand entrance, and yeah, Playmaker arrives, and that caps off the episode when Ai says, the true battle could not begin without Playmaker. And now we see the gate of the uh, Lingaribo ship open, and I and Robopi are there. They jump on their boards, and they are on. The duel is on. The war is on. Zizen is the goal, and that is where the episode leaves off. So yeah, like I said, episode, no duel, but it was plot armor if there was ever a definition for plot armor episode. So it was a really good episode all the way around. We need more plot armor episodes. We had some real world interactions, which was a nice change. Vrains really did a good job with this episode. I'm actually very happy with this episode, unlike last week where the duel left a lot to be desired and a sour taste in my mouth. Overall, I give this episode a 9 out of 10. It was a well-done episode. It was a well-done plot armor episode, and I can't wait for the battle to begin 
next week. So with all of that being said, everybody, as always, in the comment section down below, let me know what you guys thought about this week's episode. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was just at there? What were your thoughts? Just let me know in the comment section down below, because as always, I enjoy hearing from you. All right, everyone, as always, Templar74 signing off. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.